In the last video, we saw some examples of some binomial experiments and how to calculate the probability of exactly k successes and n trials using this formula here. Now, in this video, I want to show how to use the TI calculator to calculate uh, this expression and to uh, extend this to calculate the values of the probability distribution. Okay, so let's take a look at the set of all possible outcomes here. So if a uh, random variable is x, what are the possible number of hits our player could have gotten uh, if he goes to bat five times? Well, uh, there could be zero hits, one hit, two hits, three hits, four hits, or five hits. Okay, now we want to fill in the probability of each of those uh, number of successes. All right, so before we calculated it using this formula, uh, let's do it now with the TI calculator uh, using the uh, built-in function that's the binome PDF function. Okay, and it's going to have three arguments. The first argument is the number of trials, the second is the probability, and the third is the outcome that we want to calculate. Okay, so let's go and do this with uh, our first one here. Now let's just imitate the first uh, uh, calculation we did last time. So uh, let's go, how do we find this uh, binomial function? Well, it's one of the distributions functions. We go under the second there, Mars, and now we have to go down and find it. It's down in the second menu here, and here it is. It's binome PDF, all right? So, and we want to just have to fill in the parameters. So in our situation, we had a total of five at-bats. The probability of the person getting a hit was 0.28, and we wanted to find the probability he got exactly two hits. All right, and we hit Enter then, and you see that was going to be exactly the last, uh, the value we had last time, 0.2926. Uh, so we'll uh, just round it off and call it uh, point. Uh, Two nine, just to keep numbers somewhat simple. Now, having done this with uh, the first uh, value here, we don't have to actually go through all those steps in the menus to get the second one. So we want to calculate the rest of these values. Now, the shortcut way of doing it is to look at the, the edit function, so that second enter. See, that brings that PDF function back up. And all we have to do is to go back to where we had the 2, replace it by 0, and hit enter. And we see it's going to be uh, 19, basically 19% 19 here. Okay, so how do we do the uh, the next one? Well, we can go second uh, edit, go back to the 2, replace it by the 1, hit enter, and it gives us around 38%. Okay, now, uh, so you get the idea we continue to do that for the rest. Uh, I've done it already before, so I just write down the results. One was 11%, and then uh, 2%. And the actual, the last one here was actually less than 1%, but because of all the round-off error, uh, we'll just call it 1%, so that the total here adds up to 1, uh, although it's, as I said, it's uh, technically less than uh, 1%. Okay, so what we've done is use this binomial PDF function to... Uh, uh, calculate these uh, uh, binomial probabilities. Now, actually, it's worthwhile noticing the PDF stands for here probability density function. And we'll see another one of these uh, uh, values, another one of these functions shortly. Well, since we have uh, these, what we want to do is take a look and see the properties, uh, some properties of this probability distribution. So if we go and uh, graph them, if I can here, draw some axis. Okay, so what are the possible outcomes along on the x-axis? Well, the values are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and five, those are the possible outcomes of our random variable. And what about the, to do a decent graph, let's see, it goes up to about 40, so we'll 
called as point one, point two, point three, maybe point four up here. And let's see if we can do the graph here. Okay, so the first one was 19%. So uh, it's hard to draw these graphs like that. Okay, so I'll draw a little box here about zero and 19%. The next one is 38. So let's see if I can just go slightly below 40. All right, there's that one. The next one is a slightly less than 30%. All right, and then we did drop down to a a little more than 10%, and then it goes down to 2%, it's not very big, and then 1% is less than that at all. So here we see the shape of this uh, uh, binomial uh, distribution, and it, you see it has kind of a bell shape. Uh, it can be sort of approximated here by a normal distribution, but it's got sort of a longer tail here. And in some later videos, we'll look at uh, the other properties of this. Uh, okay, now notice that the area of all of these rectangles here adds up to one because you now each of these uh, bases has just one unit wide. And so the base times the height, the height is the probability. So the sum of all of these uh, rectangles, some of the area, well, the, some of the, yeah, the area, of the rectangles is going to be equal to one, and so, and that will be the uh, one of the properties of, of probability density functions. Now, since we have this here, we can look at some other problems. For example, supposing I want to know the probability that the person got at least two hits. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means he's the probability that the number of hits has got to be what, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, if you had more of these things, you see, what we want to do is we want to basically add up all of these, and we see what that's going to be. Well, we can just add them up, since we already have this done here. It comes out, I think, to 43%. Notice that if this has involved four calculations here, so we can shortcut that a little bit in the following way. We can say, well, this is the same as 1 minus the probability that x was the, the complementary signal, that x was going to be either 0 or 1. Okay, so it turns out we, if we calculate this, well, in this particular problem, uh, you can look at the, the numbers here and say, okay, all I had to do is to add 0.19 to 0.38 and add those things up and get. Uh, 0.57 and subtract it from 1, I get 43. But now, uh, what if you had more data points here? You wouldn't necessarily want to do this directly. Well, that brings up this idea of this other function here. The, if we look at the probability that uh, x is going to be less than or equal to some value k, this can be expressed by a binome CDF. Now that stands for cumulative density function, and the parameters work the same way. The number of trials, the probability of success, and then there's the k number. So uh, this number here uh, can be calculated as 1 minus the binome uh, CDF C uh, DF of 5.5 to 8 and 1, because 0 or 1. So let's see how that would, would work. Let's bring our calculator back up here. All right, and so turn it on. So we have now have to actually go back to that function because it's a different function, so I have to go down and find it. And there's the CDF function. So if I put in 5 as my number of trials, 0.28 is the probability. And then we wanted to find it less than or equal to 1. And so you see there's basically 57%. Uh, that's what we had uh, uh, obtained when I added that up here. This was 1 minus 0.57. And that works out to be the same, 0.43. You see, the idea involved in that is that if we wanted to 
find the probability that the number was going to be two or more. Instead, we would add up the probability here of this cumulative density function, and this is what this uh, represents. Okay, so what we've done is seen uh, uh, how to use the TI calculator to calculate uh, some of the, the, the density function for the binomial distribution as well as the cumulative density function. All right, thanks for watching.